Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this brief edition, we're going to be looking ahead to that important Premier League clash with Brighton and Hove Albion on Thursday night. Thursday night, you're asking, Premier League action, what's going on? Well, Amazon Prime have taken over. They showed uh, some games on Tuesday. They've got some games on Wednesday, and they're showing games on Thursday. So, little tip, if you fancy a bit of Amazon Prime, you might as well sign up to the free trial because if you do, it lasts for 30 days. Therefore, you will get the Boxing Day games as well. So it's worth the aggro of, of going through uh, the sign-up process and, of course, cancelling it after if you don't want to stay subscribed. But I'm sure lots of you use it for your shopping anyway, so you might as well make the most of it. Right, I'm going to start off by talking about Freddie Lundberg's press conference. Of course, um, it was the first one where he's had to face the media properly as a fully-fledged Arsenal manager. And um, I, I thought it was really good. I thought it was good the way that Lundberg identified certain issues that this team have. And he spoke about uh, us in the transition. He talked about that and he talked about how it's something that we'll be working on moving forward. And I thought that was quite refreshing to hear as a fan because we have been used to Unai Emery who would never admit when there was any problems with the team. He'd sit there and say, you know, our work is good and this and that, and it got a bit boring, and the communication just simply wasn't there. I'm not saying you should go into press conferences, Harry Redknapp style, and reveal everything and talk about everything, but just to give the fans a little bit um, so they can understand what it is you're working on and how you're working on it. I think that's so, so important, so I was pleased uh, to hear that. Of course, Freddie was asked as well about his uh, attire that he chose to wear during the Norwich game, and, and he responded in a bit of a jovial way, and you know, he said, I couldn't get my suit from the dry cleaners in time. But who gives a shit what Freddie Lundberg wears? I mean, there are managers, like he said, that wear track suits. There are managers that wear suits. There are managers like Pep Guardiola who wears all sorts of fucking rubbish. So it, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's neither here nor there. I can't believe that paid journalists would waste the question. Because in a press conference, you only get a certain amount of questions before the press officer comes along and says, that's enough. And I just find it astonishing that they would waste a question on that. So, yeah, anyway, that, that drove me absolutely bonkers when I when I heard that. But let's have a look at the Arsenal starting lineup that I'd go with. And there's much talk about this. There was a lot of people who disagreed with the lineup that Freddie went with at the weekend. I wasn't too fussed by it. I, like I said uh, in the review, it probably wasn't exactly the 11 I'd have gone with, but I could understand why he made those decisions. So let's take a look at um, what I would go with for uh, Thursday night's game against Brighton and Hove Albion at the Emirates Stadium. Here we go. So this is what I'd go with. Um, I'd start with Bernd Leno in goal. I think that's a no-brainer. I think he was absolutely sensational in that game uh, against Norwich. I thought he was, he was, you know, arg well, not, not even arguably, he was Arsenal's best player by a country mile. I'd bring Hector Bellerin back in the side, providing he is fit. Um, of course, we don't know exactly um, what the situation is with him. You know, they always say we're going to check it out before the game, etc. But if he's available, if he's fit, if he's ready, he'd be in the side for me. Um, the central defensive pairing, I'd keep it the same. A lot of you would disagree. But I thought particularly in the first half against Norwich, Arsenal kept the ball a lot better. And I think it was partly down to having those two at the back because they were able to pick out passes. They were able to step forward. And with Mustafi in there, whilst he's not the greatest defender, we all acknowledge that, he allows you to push a little bit further up the pitch because he's got a bit more pace than Socrates and he's got a bit more pace than David Lewis. So for me, that would stay the same. I think it's a home game. I think we're going to have a lot of possession. Um, that's obviously something Freddie's big on. So I'm all for those two starting. And you're, you're going to disagree. Let me know in the comments who you'd play at centre-back. I know some people are going to say Chambers, but for me, that's not the solution. Um, left back, I'd bring Kieran Tierney back in. I thought he needed a rest against Norwich. I thought he looked really um, sluggish in recent weeks. I thought he was particularly poor in the game against Southampton. Not just from the penalty he gave away. I feel like in the last few weeks, teams have been getting a lot of joy down that side of the pitch against us. So I, I thought Kalasinac came in and did OK. Gave us a lot going forward. Um, in terms of his drive and his directness, maybe not necessarily the end product, but 
Um, I, I think that Kieran Tierney should come back into the team uh, for this one on Thursday. In the middle of the park, I'd go with Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira. I thought Xhaka was one of Arsenal's better players at Norwich. And again, people would disagree. And that's because they have an agenda against him. But if you look purely at the performance, I thought Granit Xhaka was really, really um, a, a lot better against Norwich. And, and without a shadow of a doubt, one of Arsenal's better players. Lucas Torreira should come in for me just purely because he does that defensive work. If you instruct him to do that defensive work, you're going to get the best out of Lucas Torreira. That is what he's all about. Um, and I thought he made some really, really important clearances uh, in that Norwich game towards the end. He got back well and he snuffed out certain uh, moments of danger, which was really, really important to us. I think those two give you the best balance. People will say, why is Genduzi not in the side? And it's not that I have anything against him. However, as I said on the Norwich review, I feel his lack of positional discipline is causing us a real, real problem. It's not a case of picking the best players. It's about picking the ones that give you the right balance, particularly in an area as important as the midfield. That's my take on it. Uh, Mesut Ozil would start again for me. A little bit quiet uh, up at Norwich, but I didn't think help. Uh, I didn't think sorry playing out on the left helped him in any way, shape or form. So I'd like to see Mesut Ozil in behind uh, the front three of Pepe on the right. I'd bring him back in the side. Um, Martinelli on the left. And I'd go with Aubameyang up top. I think you, you've got to leave Lacazette out. I think that Lacazette and Aubameyang, you know, we're all calling for them to play together. But ultimately, we can't find the balance that way. It's not quite working. I think we're going to need a lot of width uh, against Brighton. You could argue that Lacazette may be suited because of his ability to play with his back to goal and to hold up play. But for me, you cannot leave Aubameyang out. So if you're in a situation where you can only play one, it's got to be Aubameyang for me. I think Pepe can can offer something. I think he can um, could do with the game time, could do with the confidence. It's so important that Arsenal win this. Um, given the run we've been on, we need to get back to winning ways ASAP. But I, I trust in Pepe. I think he can do something uh, if he's given uh, the opportunity to do so on Thursday night. Gabriel Martinelli on the left. Well, for me, he's earned uh, a starting place in this team. Every time he's been on the pitch, he's made things happen. Came on far too late against Norwich, but even still created a chance, didn't he? So for me, that's the lineup I'd go with. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and all the usual jazz. Uh, you know it by now. So what can we expect from Brighton and Hove Albion on Thursday evening? You can expect a committed, organised performance uh, from a side who, let's face it, are going to be, at some point, you feel dragged into the relegation mix. I don't think they're a great side. I don't think they've got great players, but they've got plenty of heart. They work really hard and they pretty much cost us a place in the top four last season. It wasn't the only game, but it was a run uh, sorry, it was one of a run of fixtures which left us ultimately missing out on the Champions League spot. So I think Arsenal will be wary of that. I think it will be in the Arsenal players' minds. And that's why getting off to a, a good, fast uh, and confident start is so, so important. I think the atmosphere at the Emirates will be good on Thursday, as good as it's been in a while. I expect more people to turn up now that Unai Emery's gone. Uh, and people to get behind Freddie Lundberg. Now... In my opinion, is he the long-term solution? Probably not. He has to prove it. Um, and, and I still would go down the route of hiring an experienced manager. Me, personally, I want to see this man come, Carlo Ancelotti. I think he's the right man. I think he's a, a big enough character. He's an authoritative character. Um, he is a, um, a proven winner. Uh, he's been in London before. He's been in the Premier League before. He's having a bad time at Napoli, but that's not just down to Carlo Ancelotti. If you follow Italian football, you'll know there are a number of issues at that club at the moment. A, a fallout between the players and the owner, which has ultimately put Carlo Ancelotti right in the middle and caused him a ton of problems. So I think that this is the perfect opportunity to go out there and get him. There were reports emerging on Tuesday night that Nitla, Napoli sorry, had decided to sack Carlo Ancelotti. We haven't had any confirmation of that at the time of this recording, but it makes sense to go there and test the waters and I'd love to see him at the Arsenal. Let me know what you think in terms of Arsenal managers. Lots of reports linking us with Marcelino, former uh, Valencia boss. There's people uh, linking us with uh, Brendan Rodgers, but 
you know, it's all speculation at the minute. It remains to be seen whether Arsenal uh, have made any progress in terms of their uh, approaches for managers or if indeed they're going to leave it till the end of the season. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you once again for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video and the audio, of course. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, all the usual stuff, and we'll be back very soon with more. Until then, take care.